Here now is Matt Austin and Ginger Gadsden with Florida's Fourth Estate. Hey, welcome back to Florida's Fourth Estate. You know, they say, why go buy milk when you can get the cow for free at home? I don't know how it works, but That's today. That's not what the saying is. That is not the saying. <laughs> today we're talking saying. about buying the whole cow, right, Ginger? Instead of like going to the store and buying a little filet here, maybe a porterhouse, <laughs> we could save some money by buying the whole cow. We can, but I just can't give you a pass on that whole. <laughs> just line, let it go. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so today we are first of all i need to tell everyone i'm a meditarian and not just for today but my entire life i am a meditarian oh, with you there. Show excites me <laughs> to no end we are going to take you out on the farm not just any farm guys there they are. That is Jeremy and Jill Barton of Barton Beef. You guys are in Bunnell. And when we're talking about getting the whole cow, we're not even playing. We can come out or not come out, but talk to you guys about getting a beautiful, oh my gosh, look at him behind you. That's a, is that an Angus, right? Yes. So we can yep. come out and we can buy an entire cow and you guys will do what? Yep, so you can purchase a quarter, half, or whole cow. Uh, we take it to our processor and they can uh, custom cut it for you however you would like whenever you purchase a half or a whole. However, whenever you get a quarter, it's a combination that we have picked out with our processor that has a standard variety of cuts for you. Okay, I yeah. see somebody sneaking up behind you here. So explain the situation <laughs> we're in. It seems like we've got a cow who's getting a little cheeky at the moment and uh -oh. trying to sneak up on the feed. I just want, I wanted you to yeah, know I have your back out here. They, they can smell, we have some feed here in the gator and they can smell it. So they're, they're, uh, they're wanting to get under these bags. So we're kind of oh, protecting them at the moment. <laughs> and for folks who are watching at home right now, don't go anywhere because we are going to get to see you guys uh, feed those cows. You have about 60 in that group right now, but out on the farm, yeah. how many do you have? Uh, total on the ranch, we run about 400 head of, of mother cows. Wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. Those, are, those are cows that are that are for breeding. They have calves every single year. And then we use the offspring they have every year for our beef program. So I made a mistake, right? Should I call you a ranch and not a farm? Is there a technical difference? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Usually yeah. You, you refer to a ranch as, as a, where you grow animals, a farm, um, they raise crops. Gotcha. Hey, Look Ginger. Okay. Get it right, will you? Okay, so. <laughs> I, can learn something new. I know. I'm I'm I didn't know that either. I'm glad you said it first. Okay, so Jeremy and Jill, you guys have this beautiful ranch. I have to tell you, I dream about something like this. 2,500 oh. acres. You have three kids out there. I just want to know before we get into the the details of the cows and the business, I want to ask you about life. Why did you choose this life? Because really, you could have done anything. <laughs> I'll let you take that, babe. All right. <laughs> well, I I was born and raised into it. My, I mean, I have several generations going back a long time that they're cattle ranchers. Uh, my great grandfather. Um, moved here to Bunnell. Actually, this area, we refer to it as Hawk Creek. That's a creek that runs through a few miles down the road. And he moved here back in the late 20s and officially moved here in 1932. Um, pur purchased a lot of land. My grandfather inherited and, and also bought some land. Then my my mother and father inherited some of that. Now Now yeah. we're the next generation um, wow. partaking in it. <laughs> yeah, you're several generations deep in this. What do you really enjoy? I mean, if we see the visuals that are out there, I, I can kind of figure out what you enjoy about some of it, but what is it that you really get from being out on the ranch day to day? Um, I mean, I just, I enjoy raising an animal, watching them grow, um, you know, watching them be healthy and um i love being out in the outdoors i love being in the woods i don't like being inside uh, <laughs> if i'm inside too long i i gotta go outside yeah. um i love um yeah i love raising animals i love people that buy our beef and say they love it i mean that's just uh 
the icing on the cake for me. Um, Sounds pretty magical. And uh, I'm just curious. So we found out about you guys because our producer was driving by and saw a sign that said something about buy a whole cow. And she didn't really know exactly what it meant. So why, is this a, I know your family has been doing this for a really long time, but why this business model instead of just uh, butchering the cow and sending it to Publix and doing that. Why did you guys decide to have to where pe- families could split a cow or buy a quarter of a cow or the whole thing? Um, yes, yeah, so we actually started this about six or seven years. Jeremy's got to get the cow. He's oh, yeah, to get yeah, it. sorry. <laughs> You're aggressive. We didn't know we needed to bring bodyguards here today to, to guard the feed for us during the interview. Uh, so about six or seven years ago, um, in the past, we'd always sold our beef commercially once or twice a year on a big semi load. Jeremy is also a firefighter paramedic for the city of Palm Coast. And truth be told, unlike Ginger, I'm not a huge steak eater. So he would always take the steaks from our house to the firehouse to grill for the guys whenever he was on shift. And he did it so often that they began requesting Barton beef. They wanted Barton beef for dinner. Um, And they would ask if they could buy part of a cow. And then we had more friends do that and more friends do that. And we realized, man, maybe we should like turn this into a little side hustle. Maybe we could like do something with this. So after a little bit of research, we realized that there was quite a demand for it for a local grass fed beef straight from the pasture to the table. And we thought, man, why not us? We could do this. And so it really just took off from there. You know, we attended some local festivals, had business cards made, got a website and um, it's been history ever since pretty much. If Matt and I decided, hey, between our two families, maybe we could split a a cow, right? Is that is that a smart way to do it, or what's the what? What do you recommend, and how do you determine what what works for people? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, depending on how often your family eats beef, you know, I would suggest starting with a quarter, or if you really want to customize things, go with a half. you'll need a separate freezer. A quarter will fill a traditional freezer, like a refrigerator freezer combo. A quarter will totally fill that up. So if you want to be able to store other things in your freezer besides just beef, um, you'll need another freezer. But it's a a great idea to split a whole cow with another family or just start out, you know, with a quarter or a half yourself. Okay, I'm curious about pricing on all of this, but I do feel terrible because I feel like you guys are about to have a riot out there. So let's get, can we get the feeding process going so these poor cows uh, cannot hate us? Oh my goodness. How many times a day do you feed these guys? These these cattle here, especially this time of year, we don't feed them every day. They they just eat grass. This is just something I do every now and then. It keeps them tame. It keeps them used to being around us. So, so I come out here every now and then, give them these, give them these cubes. It's kind of a treat for them. It gets them used to us. That way, they don't, they don't get wild. They don't get crazy. They're easier to handle. Mm-hmm. And so, for a lot of people, you know, and I, I guarantee you, we're going to hear from people who are mad at us because we're talking about this very subject. They're going to be like, "Well, why don't you just let them live?" and whatever um but so can you tell us because it seems like a very humane way that they're being raised and cared for you know when you talk about free range boy they've got thousands of acres that they have at their disposal right absolutely you know and and i love animals and jeremy was out of town last week and i had to feed them and i hate the thought of them eventually going to the processor but you know, they live a great life. They really do. They have a great, happy life. And we're, um, you know, we're blessed that they can provide food for families, so. Okay, so if a family is interested, what is a whole cow gonna cost me? Um, a whole cow will be around $3,500. Beef is currently $5.95 per pound. But keep in mind that is you're paying for the carcass weight, also known as the hanging weight. Um, and that price does include all of your processing fees as well. Mm-hmm. And so it compared to like if you bought the same amount of meat from Publix or another grocery store, are people saving a decent amount of money on this? Yeah. I mean, because, goodness, I haven't bought beef. It's been ever since I've been married to him. So over 15 years. <laughs> but I've heard that steaks are crazy expensive right now. So if you consider the fact that whenever you purchase a quarter or a half, you're getting T-bones, ribeyes, um, you know, chuck, chuck roast, sirloin tip roast. You're getting some great cuts of beef. So, yeah. 
Oh, that's it. Okay. So feasibly, how long will that last? Say you buy an entire one for your family and you're freezing it. How long can you keep it frozen? Yeah, so the beef is good for at least a year in your freezer. Mm -hmm. Most of our repeat customers who we're so grateful for, they usually purchase about every nine months. Stay with us as we take a deeper dive into what it takes to run a ranch like this. The love story behind the couple who keep it running and the expectations they have for their kids. Welcome back to Florida's Fourth Estate. Today, we are at Barton Beef in Flagler County talking about how you can skip the grocery store and buy a local grass-fed cow right from the ranch and getting to know the people behind the company. What I loved is that you said, oh, he looks really cute when he feeds the cows. You guys have been married for 15 years, right? And I would imagine that it is a different lifestyle when you are out on the ranch. Like even on a bad day, it's not such a bad day. <laughs> Yeah, it is pretty sweet. You know, every night when I look out of the kitchen window and I see the sunset, I'm just like, man, that's that's pretty awesome. So super grateful. For sure. Jill, did you get dragged into this by a country boy? <laughs> uh, you don't seem like. Absolutely, Matt. Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> you know, we uh, we met on MySpace and I feel like there's a select group of people who will know what MySpace is. Oh, yeah. And I tell him that his saving grace was that his default picture he had on a a gator, like a UF baseball hat, because he was on a horse roping a cow. And I said, if you would have had on a cowboy hat, I would have thought this dude is too, too country for me. But the baseball hat, I was like, okay, maybe. I can work with that. More approachable with the baseball hat. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's a good thing I had that hat on that day. <laughs> <laughs> it's the and little decisions. You're wearing it today. You're wearing the... <laughs> yeah. Yep, all because of that Florida Gator hat. Oh my God. Uh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I hear that this business model that you guys have come up with has really taken off. And if somebody wanted to order one of these beautiful oh, cows that we're looking at live here, you've got to wait to be able to get one, correct? I'm afraid so. Right now, our next available is not until July. Oh my oh, gosh, that's even changed from when I looked it up last night. I read May, so it's even changed from then, July. Yeah, I, I got to contact our website guy and have him change it. <laughs> no, no, but that's good that people know that. That is, uh, did you ever in your wildest dreams think, you know, because I'm like, did, were you even aware that COVID happened? Because it seems like you have the best of, of both worlds. You're out you know, there. You know don't have to be around people and, and you can feed the people. Yeah. COVID, you know, during COVID we were, I feel like that's where we really reached the height of our business was during COVID. And so we almost had a bit of a guilt trip because I know so many people were struggling and we were really thriving during that time. And I think it's because so many people um, became concerned with food scarcity. And so self-reliance was really at the forefront of people's minds. And that can look different for everyone, you know, whether that be planting a garden or buying some extra um, shelf stable foods whenever you go grocery shopping or buying half a cow from Bar and Beef. Um, regardless, I think that COVID really made people want to be more self-sufficient for their families because, you know, the future was a little unpredictable at the moment and still is, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it made us want more land too, like what you guys have. It seems like you guys were just ahead of the curve in every single way possible. Ginger and I were on land and farm every day <laughs> during the pandemic. Like we just want to get away from other people and just kind of be out in the land on our own. And it seems like you guys uh, have that figured out. It's uh, it's so cool. What an interesting, is it a lifestyle that you would recommend to everybody? Because I know we're kind of, we're glamorizing it a little bit. Tell me the worst part of living out on a farm, because I would imagine there's a lot of work out there. You got some cow patties you know, out there, I would imagine. When we, were, when we were newly married, we went to a cattle market. And the moment <laughs> I opened the door of the truck, I said, woof, oh my gosh, it smells <laughs> terrible. And you know what this guy says? Oh, I love that smell. <laughs> so, you know, I feel I love the smell of uh, sunscreen and chlorine. So I feel like it's it's what you grow up with, you know. Um, but the worst part for me would be the smells, flies. But he probably wouldn't even agree with that. So what? the worst part for me is just like what we just had storms, flooding, um, mm. drought, just stuff that the grass won't, doesn't grow or stuff that stresses the cattle out. Um, especially winter time, you get um, hard frost that kills the grass and the cows don't have anything to eat. They lose weight. 
So that for me is the, I don't know, part I don't like, but I mean, I, was, I grew up, my, my mom and dad, I mean, we worked hard every day, sun up, sun down. And so, I mean, to be able to do this, you have to work hard all day, every day. And I, I love to work. I, I enjoy going to work. The work doesn't bother you. It's the stress. And uh, I, I must say, like, as a, we take this live look at these cows, look at they look so healthy and they're, <laughs> they're kind of they're very energetic. One thing a lot of people worry about these days is what the cows are eating, what kind of antibiotics they're getting. So I wanted to ask you guys about your farm and your practices. When people go and they buy a cow locally from you guys, what's the difference between you and and a major producer? Well, our, our cattle, there are hormonal implants you can give them. There's different stuff you can give them that helps them to grow faster. Um, we don't do that. Um, they're all natural. Um, they're never confined to a stall and yeah. fed strictly grain. As you yeah. see, they are roaming happily all day, every day. Um, so they always have plenty of space to move around, whether it be like chilling out under a shade tree or taking a walk mm -hmm. through a pond. Um, so commercially, they're not going to get that. And, and also we, you know, we sell grass fed beef, but we also sell grain finished beef. Mm -hmm. But our grain finished cattle are just like this. They're out on grass all day long. And in the mornings, we give them a few buckets of grain. In the evening, we give them a few more. And the rest of the day, they're eating grass. So they're not confined to a small area. Um, they, are, they roam around. They're happy. They can go wherever they want. Yeah, they look like they're playing behind you right now because they've got some food in them. And so they're they're really, you know, just they're just happy. They're just happy. And I know it sounds like a silly thing to say. They look like happy cows, but they do look like really happy and, and very loved cows. When we started our business and we were trying to think of a logo, I said, what about happy cows taste better? But he was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go for that one. No, no, he's not doing that. Well, they do. It, it, it's fascinating uh, to see you guys and, and to see this life uh, that you have built out there. And what do the kids think about it? So you've got three children who live out there. Do they like it? Are they like, man, I just want to be on my phone like a normal kid and not having to raise cows? <laughs> We definitely have a mixture, uh, for sure. Yes. Our, our oldest is like, I'm going to live in the city where it snows. So, you know, his, yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, let me know about that when you get older. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. But they, they, they know how to ride a horse. They come out and help, you know, yep. they, they like to go out, and, but they also like their video games. Sure, they, they're normal. Yeah, so yeah. And, um, we're kind of, we let them do whatever whatever passion drives them. If they don't want to be a rancher, that's fine with us. If they want to go live in the city one day, and get too. a, get an office job. That's, that's fine with us yeah. too. The only rule is they have to play a sport. That's <laughs> what I tell them each season, pick something. You got to pick a sport. So I like it. Oh, Keep them active. Yeah. We're, we're just wanting to talk to you longer because the view is so phenomenal because if you can see our view, their computers and everything, and we're inside. And then when we see this sweet baby, look at that. That it's just, it's just so great. But I do want to say one thing to Matt. The saying, Matt, is why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? He doesn't know that because he met his wife at 16. When he was 16 years old, he already oh. met the woman he was going to I marry, bought the so. cow real oh. early. So that's the way it is. And I've got three kids, too. And I, I must say, uh, we have totally enjoyed this conversation. Thank you for bringing us not just to your ranch, but also to where you live. And uh, and if people are interested, what's the best way to contact you guys if they are interested in ordering beef? To from get you? on the waiting list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shoot me an email. Yeah. Bartonbeef at gmail.com for okay. sure. And you guys have a website too, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Bartonbeef.com. All right. Oh, Bartonbeef.com. Jeremy and Jill Barton, you guys are amazing. Can we just come out and visit you guys one day, though? Absolutely. That's yeah. a okay. real Barton. threat. That is <laughs> a genuine threat. We will come yeah. out there. Yeah, we, we really will. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for what you're doing out there. Thank you for sharing it with us and our audience. We've loved spending time with you today. Yeah. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you guys so much. Don't work too Thank hard. You. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs>
thank you. Thanks for watching. You can listen to Florida's Fourth Estate from wherever you listen to podcasts and on News 6 Plus anytime.